a link expression can be stored inside a variable or an argument. And in this video, I'll show you how you can do that. So I'm gonna use an assign here. And I have in my clipboard already uh, some query with from customers DT. I'm having a look again to the number, uh, the first item with the length of four. Now here in the two, I need to declare a variable. What will be the result out here? What will be the data type? Well, if you're gonna look here, actually it's very easy. Uh, this is a collection of data rows. Now, how do you define a collection of data rows? Well, I'm gonna say here a variable, I'm gonna name it a list. And to the list, I will here browse, go browse for type. I'm gonna type I enumerable. And I don't want to display the system collections. I'm gonna display the, I'm gonna take the system collections generic. And to the uh, variable type, I'll use data row. Again, I'll pick data row because uh, I'm still having as a result the data rows here. Please keep in mind that where does not change the result type. I'm still uh, having data rows because as enumerable, it's output data rows. So this is the way how I put in a result in a variable, the result from here. Now, how I can chain multiple results? Well, I'm gonna show you a scenario. Let's say I want to read a data from the input and I want to check the domain name to check in the email list. So I have this list of five members, which are based on the first name. And I want to ask the user the email address, the email domain, and then I'm gonna check if that domain it is among the five uh, items, which I'm checking already with a length of four. First, I'm gonna ask the user, I'm gonna just type input, input dialog. I'm gonna type as a label, uh, please enter the domain. I'm gonna have a result here. Well, I say user domain, and I can say user email domain or user domain. And then here to the for each, instead of just uh, grabbing the result from the customer's DT, I can take it from the list. So list dot where, and I say function, uh, this is still a row and the row dot field of string email, it contains the variable, which I'm gonna say here, uh, that it means user email domain. And this will result uh, a collection of rows. I'm gonna say, okay, by the way, I have the for each, which will take uh, the type argument as a data row. I can replace this data row with a string uh, with the integer, but in this case, I'm just gonna um, still using as a string. Now, if I'm gonna run here, uh, let's say I will, I'm expecting to don't have anything displayed. So I'm gonna just say test, okay. And now I have an runtime execution error. It says the activity context can only be accessed with the scope of a function it was passed into. Now I need to tell that this is a bug from UiPath, not actually the UiPath itself, for the from the workflow that UiPath is using. And you can uh, use, and there is actually a workaround. I'm gonna use to list. Now what the list does, I'm gonna explain in the next video, but for uh, now, just keep in mind that the last for each, in case you have this um, error, you need to display, you need to display to list. Now uh, the robot works. I'm gonna have a look to the output and there is no which match here. So if I want to have the results, I think the time path, so I'm just gonna copy this, copy, hit paste, hit okay. Let's have a look to the output and there are two email addresses with this match. So this is how you expose results from a language integrated query and you can use among with a for each. Well, this trick I use a lot in my robots and if you do find it useful, you know what you do with that like button. Also, I want to tell you that this video is part from my entire course where I teach you link from scratch. If you want to find more about that, check out the description video below or I do have a playlist with a lot of link videos on my YouTube channel. Also, I'll leave a link in the description.
I'm Daniel and until the next time, see you soon. Bye.